it is important to recognize that the conflicts affect men and women differently, that uh, inequalities in society are often exacerbated by conflicts. But I think it's even more in important to convey that women are a resource, very often an untapped resource that we need to put into conflict prevention and resolution. My first 100 days on the job as the Special Representative for Women, Peace and Security has been a little adventure for me. Uh, my overall objective is, uh, has continued to be to assist this organization in enhancing its delivery of results when it comes to women, peace and security. And I have identified a number of possibilities to move this agenda forward step by step. But I see three strategic challenges. Uh, and those are, one, to reach the mindsets of people, two, to institutionalize the issue, and three, to work together with others. Uh, to reach mindsets, it's important because only then you will change the way people work and think about this issue. For example, if the defense planners and the planners for the operations themselves identify the gender perspective as important for how they conduct their work, the results will be so much better. To institutionalize the issue, that is important because we do have a policy, we do have an action plan, but we need to make sure that these, the implementation of these are not left to champions and that the implementation is not ad hoc. So we need to streamline how we work on this internally. And then the third strategic challenge to work with others this is simply because the agenda of women, peace and security is such a vast agenda. It's an agenda that's been developed policy-wise by the Security Council. And if we, uh, as a regional political military organization, are going to be effective in our delivery on this, we have to work with others, and in particular the UN. NATO can do a lot to promote women's role in women, peace and security. Uh, first and foremost, it's important that an organization like NATO shows political leadership, and this we are doing. Uh, secondly, uh, NATO is a very operational uh, organization, and uh, we have means and capabilities to operationalize this, in particular in our operations, uh, but also in our cooperative security. Uh, and I would say that uh, in order for us to do this in a good way, in an efficient manner, uh, we are using training and education as strategic tools, not only for our own troops before they are deploying to operations, but also uh, as a tool that we can offer to partners and train their security forces if they wish to. I think we are beginning to get some very valuable experiences from both our operations, uh, K4 and ISAF. Uh, but in particular in Afghanistan we have now some years with uh, experience having gender advisors in the operations and having the specific competence inside our operation has proven to be very valuable in understanding the situation that we are moving in. Uh, likewise, uh, we are also gaining experience of the importance of having female uh, soldiers in, in our operations, soldiers and officers. Uh, also, it's a very significant way to be able to reach uh, the half of the population that otherwise might be excluded for liaise with our troops. Uh, thirdly, uh, we have very valuable experiences from Afghanistan in engaging with civil society. Commanders at all levels, they are beginning to engage with civil society and this has only enhanced our ability to understand the societies but also the representatives of the civil society to understand why we are there and what our job is. So all of these experiences are very valuable and in order to make the proper lessons learned, uh, we, are, uh, we have initiated a review on the practical implications of implementing the UNSCR 1325 and the related resolutions in our operations. And that review will greatly inform us uh, in how we should develop our operational thinking further. When I look at my own uh, work, uh, I look at it with humility and uh, not with pride. Uh, but I am proud uh, of working 
for a secretary general of an organization that shows such a strong political leadership for this agenda. That makes me proud. And it makes me proud also to work with so many uh, capable and engaged uh, people in the good offices of NATO. Uh, but my own contributions, uh, I look at a little bit you know, more with more humility. If I have been able throughout this first three months to formulate the agenda, to, uh, to sharpen the focus, and to start the avenue to, towards enhanced delivery of results, I will be 